Hi, this is Gilles, the radio proper, and I'm at the park again. You know, you can spend uh, two, three hundred dollars on short compromise antennas, and uh, some of them work really well. I uh, used to have a uh, buddy pole, and uh, now I use a uh, chameleon hybrid micro with the whip. And both those antennas uh, work pretty well, but nothing beats a full-size antenna, especially a half-wave and fed, uh, in my opinion. But for that, you need uh, you need a mast. Uh, you saw the one I uh, tested last week. Problem uh, is with that one is that it's a metal mast, so. I need something uh, non-conductive that wouldn't change the uh, radiation pattern of the antenna. So uh, guess what I got? By the way, this uh, table and chair, and that was money well spent. It really makes my uh, operating uh, that much easier and more comfortable. Anyway, you already know what I got. It's a spider beam heavy duty fiberglass pole. 12 meter long, 40 feet. So uh, that's pretty big. I would have liked a, uh, to test a longer pole, but uh, I just couldn't afford one. The first impression that I got uh, when I received the pole is that uh, it's pretty heavy. You realize uh, right away uh, this isn't a fishing pole. It's never been a fishing pole and it wasn't meant to be a fishing pole. The end of it is pretty thick, unlike a fishing pole again. It's not, uh, it doesn't bend, not much anyway. Remember the uh, MEF1 unfed tuner from uh, EA3 GCY? Well, I never tuned it because I didn't have a mask long enough, but now I do. Uh, to attach the antenna, I have this little piece of uh, broken uh, fishing pole that I'm going to slide into the tube, like so. You can see this tube is, is pretty thick. And here is my antenna wire attached and uh, I'll just slide it in and it should stay there. I have a convenient pole here that I'm going to attach the uh, mast on. It's not too long so I hope it won't affect the uh, radiation pattern of the antenna. My problem right now is that I, I just got a few drops so uh, it's not a good sign. Well let's try anyway. As you can see, it's pretty high and my wire is coming down here with the MEF-1. I'm going to use the uh, MR-100 to adjust the uh, capacitor in the tuner. A very useful little gadget. The uh, SWR is 5.8 to 1, so not good at all, but uh, I want to set the frequency to 14.1 uh, megahertz because I want to use the uh, Morse code CW portion of the band and that's the, uh, the lower part. 
All I have to do is uh, tune that capacitor here while uh, watching the SWR and try to bring it as low as I can. Ah, the lowest I could get is uh, 4.35, 4.4 to 1. So I guess my wire uh, must be too long. I need to cut a little, a uh, few inches off. The least I can get is 3.2 to 1 at 13 megahertz. So that's more than one megahertz off. And I already cut a couple of feet off. So I'm just going to have to cut more. Well, it rained earlier, so plan B, the spider beam is going to help with the VMARS net tonight on 80 meter. So I have a 135 foot wire that goes down this way. And the other side goes down here to the hybrid micro. I'll uh, give my reports here. Uh, uh, M5 AKY is a 4, uh, no S meter, of course. G, uh, yourself, G3 YYH, 5, PA3 BOH, 5, and then down to a 3, G0 KNJ, 3, G4 JFX, 5, G4 RX, 5, G6 PBJ, 4, M3 MPD Portable, 3, thank you for the message. And uh, G4RS is a 5. Uh, over. Now I'm going to test the uh, spider beam mast with my OA144 2 meter omnidirectional antenna. Now this antenna is only one pound so it's pretty light so it shouldn't be a problem even though I'll have to remove probably a few sections of the mast so that I can slide it on. But the cable now, <laughs> the cable is pretty heavy. It's LMR 400 Ultraflex and uh, I hope it won't be too heavy. Weight can be a problem for telescopic mass because the sections can uh, get loose and uh, come down crashing on you and that can split them so uh, the longer masts have uh, clamps like the uh, 18 meter 60 foot mast from uh, spider beam but the 12 meter model doesn't so I'm hoping the uh, the weight of the cable and the antenna uh, won't be a problem. The good thing about the spider beam though is that uh, this rubbery cap absorbs, can absorb the shock of the uh, sections collapsing. So I think that even if the uh, mast collapsed, uh, I don't think it would break. And it's pretty thick too, so it's a pretty strong mast. I'm not too worried about that. I had to remove three sections of the mast so that I could clamp the uh, OA144 onto it. And that's fine because now it's a uh, 9 meter mast. Which is fine because the uh, top of the roof is at 8 meters, so it's 1 meter above. I taped the uh, cable to the mast. Now I just have to uh, raise it and see if it will take the weight. Well, seems to be holding up pretty good. Impressive. And that's a heavy, heavy cable. It's uh, moving a bit. Uh, there's a little bit of wind, but uh, hopefully it's just going to stay up. CQ, CQ, CQ. CQ, CQ, CQ. Ici F4, W, B, Y. Foxtrot 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. QRZ.
it would have been nice to uh, get a conversation, but yeah, that's not really the goal of this video. It's more about the uh, spider beam. So uh, this weekend uh, we are in the fortified city of uh, Montreuil, north of France. It's pretty nice, and it's uh, it's pretty high up. So uh, of course I brought a radio, KX2, and a spider beam. But I'm going to show you a little bit of the countryside first. Not a bad place to set up a radio station. Looks like we just uh, stumbled upon a car show. <laughs> you guys are going to have to wait a couple more minutes. I miss my Corvette. Mine was an 84, I think. It's a while ago. A couple Ferraris. That one would be uh, quite at home in a uh, World War II movie with the French Resistance. With the uh, spider beam today, I'm going to use the uh, PAR unfed antenna for 40, 20 and uh, the 10 meter band. This is a great antenna, guys. Uh, I once had a contact from Florida to Estonia, 5,200 miles with this antenna using 1.3 watts. <laughs> so I know it works. Uh, and now I'm gonna set up the uh, spider beam and we'll get going. We have a pretty nice view on the town here on the countryside. And I put the uh, spider beam on a fence. The uh, PAR antenna, which by the way now is sold by LNR Precision, but I think PAR still has one, is a little bit at an angle. And I'm set up right here. The uh, KX2 is plugged in directly to the, into the antenna. No need for a tuner. I have my Ken key and an static microphone. Three 18650 cells for power. Roger, thank you very much. You are 57 here, 57 to 58 in the uh, north of France, uh, QSL. Thank you, have a good day. Foxtrot 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. Okay, have a nice day, good luck and many dias to you. Macedonia, <laughs> not bad. DX only. I guess it means outside of Europe here. Once again. I'm on uh, automatic calling here every 10 seconds. There's a contest going on on uh, the CW part of the band, so everybody's doing the contest. And I hate contests. <laughs> so uh, maybe I'll try again in uh, USB. I don't know. Anyway, it's working awesomely well. That PAR and Fed uh, is excellent. Foxtrot 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. Can I have a Juliet Oscar Portable, please? Juliet Oscar Portable? Foxtrot 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee, QRP. Fox 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. Fox 
four whiskey at Bravo Yankee, you're five eight. Charcero two, Alima Charlie, Mot Charcero two, Alima. Fox four whiskey at Bravo Yankee, five eight. Thank you very much. You are 5 9 plus 5. 5 9 plus 5 here in the north of France, uh, QSL. QSL and the 5 9. Thank you very much, my friend. 76 and take care. QRZ. Scotland, the Spider Beam 40 foot 12 meter pole is pretty good. It's very sturdy, it's not very flexible, so in this case, it's an asset compared to, uh, say, a, uh, a regular fishing pole. Uh, the weight might be an issue. Uh, if I was going to go hiking, I might prefer a uh, carbon fishing pole. But for portable operations, when you don't have to go too far, this is a, a pretty good pole. Have a good one.